Okay, everybody, so we're going to graph y equals a half x minus 3. And we're given these points, negative 2, blank, 0, blank, and 2, blank, right? Um, so what I'm going to suggest is that we make a little table here and plug the points in, plug the x values in, and calculate the y values. So this just means that these are, these are the x values, and we have to figure out the y values for each x value, right? Right, so in other words, x is going to be negative 2, 0, and 2, right? Negative 2, 0, and 2, and then we're going to calculate the y value for each one. So um, when x is negative 2, y is a half times negative 2 minus 3. So we plug negative 2 in for x here, and then we calculate this. So I want you all to press pause on the video and calculate that one. All right, so we can write negative 2 as negative 2 over 1. Every integer can be written as a number over 1. So like the number, you know, uh, 19 can be written like 19 over 1, right? Same thing. So if I do that, I've actually got two fractions being multiplied. you got to think about PEMDAS, multiply and then subtract. So that's 1 half times negative 2 over 1 minus 3, all right? Um, and multiply the tops. One times negative two, it's negative two, and two times one is two minus three. I'm beating this to death, sorry about that. But that's negative two over two, that's negative one minus three. I'm in debt one dollar, I subtract three dollars, I'm in debt four, right? Or you can change this subtract to blam blam plus negative, it says negative one plus negative three, which makes negative four. Now there's a, you don't have to go through all this. I wrote it all out just to make it clear. But I mean, at the very beginning, this became negative two over one. We could have done this. Two into two goes once, two into two goes once. I got one times negative one, which makes negative one. And just skip from here to here and, and don't need to write all this out. That's okay. But uh, guys should be getting negative four on that. So the next point is a half times zero minus three. Please press pause on the video and try that one yourself. So we plug zero in, it's a half times zero, which is zero minus three. And I mean, I have no money, I spend three dollars, I'm in debt by three. Or change this to plus negative and it's zero plus negative three, zero plus negative three is just negative three. The next point I want you to try is a half times two minus three. Please press pause on the video and try this yourself. So I hope you try this one yourself. Um, again, let's write that 2 as 2 over 1. So it's a half times 2 over 1. And, um, you know, the 2s just cross cancel because I got a 2 on the top and a 2 on the bottom. And that's just like 1 times 1, which is just 1 minus 3. I have $1. I subtract $3. I'm in debt by $2. Or change subtraction to plus negative. One plus negative three. One good guy and three bad guys is two bad guys, right? So we have our points. When x is negative two, y is negative four. When x is zero, y is negative three. When x is two, y is negative two, right? And we can plot those points on the graph. So what I want you all to press pause and plot these points on the graph. All right, so... Negative 2, negative 4. When x is negative 2, y is negative 4. That's there. When x, and then we've got 0, negative 3. When x is 0, y is negative 3. Here. Then we have 2, negative 2. When x is 2, y is negative 2. That's that point there. And now we can draw a line through those. And that's our answer there. And I'm just going to run over the slope on my intercept because I can't help myself. But I hope you all notice that the line hits the y-axis at negative 3. That's called the y-intercept. And notice that that is that number there, negative 3, right? Because this is a linear equation. It's of the form y equals the slope times x plus b, which is the y-intercept. That's the y-intercept b, right? Um, the other thing is that if you 
uh, if, as you move along the line, to, you go like from one point to the next, you're going to run two and rise one. You go over two, up one. You run two, you rise one. Run two, rise one. Run two, rise one. Run two, rise one. Every time we're running two, rising one. So if I take the slope, which is rise over run, the run is two, the rise is one. And that is what our M is. Our M, our slope is one half, right? 